Good morning, everyone, and thank you for joining us for FMT's presentation of Solver BI360 Streamlining Budgeting and Forecasting. My name is Lucas Darling, and I'm an account executive here at FMT Consultants. I am joined here by Alex Geller from Solver, who will be taking you on this journey today. For those of you who aren't familiar with FMT, I'd like to just take a few moments to give you a brief introduction to our company. Here at FMT, we, we opened up for business in 1995 and have successfully completed over 1,500 projects and have accumulated over 350 clients spanning the U.S. and even into Canada. During this time, we have been able to establish ourselves as Southern California's leading provider of integrated solutions, and along with 21 years of experience, we have grown to well over 80 team members located both in Carlsbad as well as in Los Angeles. At FMT, we pride ourselves on our five core values, which we like to hold ourselves to every day. Those values are integrity, service excellence, collaboration, innovation, and passion. The FMT way is really something you begin to understand once you get engaged and begin to work with us. With the combination of talent, experience, and methodology, we are fully dedicated to the success of your company. We offer a wide array of services pertaining to ERP, CRM, SharePoint, BI, Office 365. We have an entire department dedicated specifically to customer support with 13 full-time senior consultants serving you from 6 a.m. to 6 p.m. Here at FMT, we have an extremely experienced consultants. We are versed in all kinds of backgrounds, industries, and systems. We even have licensed CPAs employed here at FMT. I would like to just take a moment and show you a few of the clients we get the privilege to work with on a daily basis. I would also like to invite all of you to our annual technology conference, Inverge 2017. Come join us and 400 plus industry professionals to learn about the latest trend technology updates from Microsoft, Oracle plus NetSuite, and SAP. There will be 24 breakout sessions, a huge bustling expo, roundtable sessions, networking opportunities, and sessions by premier businesses around this area. Now I'm going to hand it over to Alex, but before I do, if at any point during the presentation you have a question, feel free to type them into the comment box. We will be monitoring it during the entire presentation and we'll answer them at the end. Thank you. Alex? Thanks, Lucas, and thank you everyone for, for joining today. Now, what I want to do, uh, today's presentation is really going to be targeted on budgeting and forecasting. Uh, so this is you know, the last of the, the part three series. The first one we took a look at the entire analytics landscape and where you know, Dynamics is evolving. Uh, where Microsoft is taking both its partners and customers. Uh, then you know, last week we took a look at management reporter replacement and hopefully it was illustrated that it's much more than management reporter because you can report across data sources. Uh, and today we'll take a look at how the budgeting and forecasting looks and feels in the BI360 suite. I'll go through the PowerPoint very quickly. Uh, I really want to spend the majority of the time uh, in the presentation playing with the product um, and illustrating how it, it's going to benefit your business. But before I do, uh, you know, as a company, and specific with budgeting and forecasting, we're really the only one on the Gartner Magic Quadrant that's Excel-based and has a live connection to Dynamics. And in the next uh, slide during the architecture, I'll showcase exactly what that means. Uh, skip through this, but you know, one of the things that should immediately stand out is this is really a tool for finance and accounting. It's not a tool that requires IT support. Uh, and we really pride ourselves on being in Excel. Uh, of course, it's Excel connected to a database, so nothing's manual, uh, but we do pride ourselves the report designing experience, uh, you know, having a, a, an Excel add-in, uh, because you know it's a much lower learning curve for you. So as opposed to other tools where you have to learn MDX, you have to le learn some sort of programming language, we came out, we said, no, I mean, our methodology is really to enable you guys to create the templates yourself. Uh, and, and that said, this is really the last slide that I want to um, focus on uh, you know, before we get into the demonstration itself. And this is how all of the components within the BI360 suite fit together. So all, you know, it really is four key pillars. 
uh, reporting, which we took out last week, budgeting, uh, dashboarding to see all the data on the web, and data warehousing. Now, this right here where my cursor is, that's live reporting from your ERP system. So we had a lot of interest with the MR replacement. Uh, yeah, it does that. And then, you know, after I had calls with several prospects, and they said, what about other data sources? Yeah, you can load in other data sources, uh, those dynamics and non-dynamics, into this data warehouse. And this typically is a scary word. For us, it's a front-end uh, user interface meant for non-technical folks. So the data warehouse is an area where uh, you'll be able to do things such as handle consolidations, uh, eliminations, you can set up, uh, you know, and, and uh, you can set up your multi-currency if you have that, uh, and then you can also build hierarchy trees. Uh, there's rights here, so certain people can just read uh, and not necessarily make changes to the data. Other admin users can make changes here, uh, and then you can, needless to say, restrict security here. Now, I, you know, I kind of illustrated once everything's in here. Yeah, you can create reports across your data sources. Uh, which can be a perfect phase one, but then people said, hey, now that we have all these data sources, now we have our full and part-time employees and my general ledger, I want to create a budgeting process within the same tool. Uh, and that's where you know, we launched this budgeting forecasting piece, uh, and we'll focus you know, most of the time today on this component. Now, it is built, like the templates themselves, in Excel, same exact area for both reports and budgeting templates. Um, and you actually start by creating a report, then add some functionality, and turn it into an input form. Uh, but then you can deploy on the web. And that's this component called the dashboards. That's really an area where you know, the end user gets to see charts, uh, gets to view their reports and drill into it to, to view actual to budget, and has the ability to go in, forecast, uh, and budget with line and details and full workflow. So the admin users can track who stored data and when it was stored. I know this is a bit overwhelming, uh, and really you know, our value differentiation is, like I said, this live connection to Dynamics. Uh, it's also to Excel. Uh, and then three, you know, what you're kind of noticing here is we check off reporting from uh, all data sources. We check off budgeting and forecasting. We check off dashboarding. We're a full suite, which from your perspective means you don't have to worry that much about integrations. You know, we go into a lot of situations where companies have management reporter, they have SSRS, uh, they have forecaster, which we directly replace, uh, and you know, then they have three or four other tools from other data sources. And then they typically dump it all into Excel. So that's now 10 tools that you're using. Our value proposition is you can grow into one tool with BI 360 and do all of your, um, your analytical needs. So let's start with uh, the presentation. And kind of Lucas said, that, you know, if you have any questions at all, just feel free uh, to post them in the, uh, in, in the question box, and we'll do a Q&A session at the end. Uh, what I want to start off with, you know, what's the end user experience? Uh, I mentioned that there are two ways to access information. I'll start with the web, and then we'll go back and I'll show you the Excel uh, interface. So I'll go and open up um, you know, a web browser here, and I'll go into a URL, and then I'll log in with my credentials. This is actually very important because a security that is set up in one place in BI360 is carried across all of these applications. So if I'm logging in here uh, and I'm a sales and marketing executive and I can just budget my operational sales and marketing, that's going to be the only template and department that I'll be able to see. And the security can really get as granular as uh, account, you know, even journal entry if necessary. We work with a lot of large companies such as uh, Quicken Loans, Washington Mutual that you know, really have complex security requirements. Uh, so we're you know, very well worse in that space. There's many ways you can set up the view. Um, I'm not going to focus too much today on, on the aesthetics, but the point here is you, know, you immediately go in and you see all the templates that you have access to. 
Uh, you can toggle certain ones as favorites. And that's advantageous because when you logged in there with your credentials, you can go in here now um, and just see the ones that are most relevant to you. Now, a few disclaimers before I kind of go in and, and start showing you how the templates over here work. Uh, one is these are all just samples. So you'll be able to replicate this based on your own requirements. And like I said a few times now, because the design experience is Excel, you know, our methodology is really to train you guys and you'll be able to create your own templates. Um, then second thing, you know, we have multiple verticals. We have about 15 different verticals, and what I mean by that is industries. Uh, so if you're, uh, let's say, not-for-profit, uh, we actually have a more specific vertical that where you can budget by membership or grants, uh, and you know you can do encumbrances. And you know, I just chose not-for-profit, but we have, like I said, many templates for various industries uh, that you can leverage as starting points. So that said, you know, the way over here on the left-hand side is you probably are saying, all right, well, yeah, I want users to have the most relevant information readily available at their fingertips, but I also want to create some, some structure there to the way they view their data. Uh, and what we've done here is, you know, here's the strategy and initiatives. Um, right underneath it, maybe you go in and you forecast. Uh, this is something you do, you know, maybe monthly. Uh, then you have the budget submitters the people just submitting it. And this is where, you know, if I'm in charge of just HR, you know, maybe it just say, hey, HR budgeting templates. Then right underneath it, uh, we have some, some of the approvers. Uh, then if you have multi-level workflow, so approvers, approving those approvers, uh, you can set that up here. And then right underneath, you know, we're not going to touch base on this too much today, but you have the budget to actual reports. Very important because you're not leaving the platform to actually evaluate the actuals and budget and the variances. Um, and then underneath here uh, are some of the dashboards uh, that you know, can illustrate, hey, you know, I'm going above budget on a certain amount. I want to see a chart. That's where they can be housed here. So I'll go back, um, you know, starting from a very high level perspective. This is a, a new template we launched recently. And we just found a lot of companies kind of just use PowerPoint or Word uh, to store their goal strategy. So we said, hey, because we have the ability to push that data back and store it, you know, why not do something like, hey, when a company sits down and uh, projects their cash or their net income for the next quarter or few years, why not store that data back? So then you can report on it and see from a high-level perspective, hey, we've always really just, just uh, you know, had a... Um, it, overbearing on our net income, uh, or we've projected way too much cash than we've actually received. That's now really easy to pull in because you have the ability to, you know, make changes. My apologies, make changes here, and then store that data back into the actual database. Okay. I'll go back and say, all right, you know, this may be something I'll eventually do and assign tasks to people. Um, but for now, you know, let's keep it a little more simple. Um, and I'll skip through. And this template is really just meant to um, start getting you guys familiar with the concept of this. But let's pretend, uh, you know, why do you need this tool? So let's pretend right now you're using Management Reporter um, and you're using Excel. Why do this? Here's why. So you pick your parameters. Uh, this is where security kicks in, by the way. Uh, you know, if I'm an executive that's just limited to, let's say, HR and finance and accounting, those are only the two departments I you know, want to be able to see, I'm going to have that limitation. So full security. Uh, and also, you know, if you want to send these templates so, hey, they automatically get the current period, uh, you can set that up, too, to make it as easy as possible. Uh, in our example, I'll stay here with September. Uh, and what it did, it gave me nine months of actual, okay, and then three months that I can forecast out to. Uh, these have some numbers in it just because the solution architect, uh, this is a portal we all use. But for you, you know, it might be blank. Um, here, for your actuals, you can drill down into any of this. And by the way, you can drill down into summary to see the roll-up information. Uh, and you can also drill down into subledger. 
Uh, if you want to see your vendor info, uh, data that's in the GP subledger modules, as well as data in other data sources, because you're pushing that into the data warehouse. Okay. But staying back on point, uh, the point here is you go and say, all right, well, I want to forecast the rest of the year. Uh, maybe I want to reforecast or I want to input data here. After you're done, you store the data back into the database. What's the point? Well, let's say it's now October. If you're using Management Reporter, you'd have to take the data from MR, copy and paste it into October, save this template, save as, put forecast to, uh, and reforecast. Whereas with our tool, what you're doing instead is you're picking the new month, which is October, clicking a button, uh, actually a pretty powerful button here, it says, are you sure you want to save those changes? Uh, you know, I'll say no here because it's a demo portal. And then expand it out, and I see that October filled in with actual data uh, that's coming from you know, your Great Plains system. What's the benefit now? Well, one, you know, yeah, obviously less error prone, right? You're not copy and pasting. And two is, yeah, you can drill into that the data so it's not static. Uh, and then three, oh, sorry about that, my internet connection there cut out. Let me try to do this one more time. Sorry about that. All right, do a, do a backup when that happens. Um, so I'll go back in here. A little bit of a different. Uh, this is on my on my local machine. Um, I'll go back. And pick out my you know entities here, um, and now it automatically gave me October data. And what's the point of this? Well, the point is you know it's less error prone. We talked about this. Uh, it clearly saves you time because you have uh, you know one template instead of two. Uh, and then super important, uh, you know it saves you a lot more time than just having two templates. What if you have multiple departments or multiple companies? Right, that's really where the value of this starts coming in. Is you're saying, well, great, you know, now I want to run it for um, instead of you know that corporate US, I want to run it for a different company or a different department. Uh, I go in here, you know, pick out my uh, department. Let's say I don't care about administration anymore. I want to do finance and accounting. Click OK. Um, click this button. Right, and now when I refresh this. It automatically goes in, gives you finance, accounting, um, and then you can you know, forecast for the rest of the year. So the point is, everything's in one place. And I'm going to collapse and I just show you. You know, here you can go through all of your various um, you know, previous uh, templates that you ran. Okay, and you can copy and paste between them and so on. Now let's go back in um, and let's say, hey, what we want to do now is take a look at um, the actual uh, you know, annual budgeting process. And anything you do in Excel, you can replicate here. Uh, in our example, you know, what I'll do is I'll say, as a budget manager, I want to store some assumptions. Now here, this, and this is extremely important, you know, I'm just showing you how the taxes, benefits, uh, capital for life, days per month work. Uh, this can be any sort of driver you want. So maybe for you, this is your you know, revenue drivers. Um, maybe this, you'll go out and say, hey, well, what happens to all my templates if the economy is low, mid, high? Whatever your drivers are, this is how it works. And your budget manager goes in and says, well, my FICA rate is actually going to be you know, 8.44. They save that data back into the database. And in this example, um, I actually will do this. And the reason I do that is back on um, you know, this, this portal, your department head, they don't really care that the FICA rate changes. What they want to do is go in here, open up their uh, personnel, and I'll select you know, maybe finance and accounting here uh, because I'm in charge of that department. Click OK, and I'll expand this out a bit. 
And if I look at it now, what it did gave me my you know, finance and accounting, all of my full-time um, and part-time employees. And right underneath here, it stores down uh, to the general ledger. Everything in yellow are things you can input. Uh, and maybe what we want to do here is Andre will say, you know, he's going to get a promotion to senior um, FP&A. And we'll say, hey, that's going to happen in, you know, February of next year. Uh, we could put an end date here. And we'll say, you know, here's the salary they're going to have. Uh, and that's going to increase in the month of, of June uh, if, you know, Andre does really well. And we want to increase it by 12%. Uh, you can also do a, a dollar increase instead, if that's preferable. Uh, and the point here is just to show you that it is flexible uh, in the way you can change these things out, right? These are just examples. You'll be able to modify these during your actual implementations. Uh, and that said, you know, here, if you have a part-time employee, uh, very nice functionality. Let's say you want to hire a new senior accountant. Um, and you type that in, you go and say that's going to happen in maybe maybe February. Um, you know, here are the hours, here are here's the rate, and it says to be hired. Once you store all that data, it's going to push down into the general ledger, and that's the huge benefit of having data from you know your payroll, such as ADP, OLT Pro, um, stored in, and having data from Great Plains. But let's go back, and you're probably saying, all right, well, what does the system do now? The system automatically went in and calculated you know, Andre's salary here. Uh, so we see a zero in January, but then in February, uh, we see the increase here. Right? We see it spread out. Um, then we continue scrolling through, and we see the total compensation. Um, and for the taxes and benefits, it now uses the 8.44 FICA rate. Why? It used that 8.44 FICA rate because I previously input that in the template. So you're no longer using links in Excel that might break. That goes away because then you're just here you're storing back and you're retrieving that 8.44 to calculate everyone's FICA, um, Fuda, Suda, right? And you hear all of these were set in a previous form with minimum, maximum. Uh, and it calculates everything on your behalf. Uh, so you don't have to you know, be stuck in Excel formulas. Now, a lot of companies here say, this is great, but what if I um, you know, want to run it for a different company? And yeah, I, I have more of a top-down approach. Uh, so I go and say, you know, I want to see all of these departments at once. Click OK. And this just shows you the flexibility of the tool, by the way. Um, you know, when I expand this out, it goes in and now gives you administration, right, full-time, um, part-time employees. Scroll down, they'll store to the general ledger. Uh, continue scrolling down. We have finance and accounting, um, full-time and, you know, part-time employees. Source to the general ledger and sales and marketing. So whatever departments I pick are expanded like that. Um, in this template. Very powerful, and I really haven't seen uh, too many other tools with the flexibility of doing something like this. Uh, I'll go back and, you know, uh, s kind of switching gears a little bit. Uh, maybe we want to look at something more operational. Uh, this right here, the flexibility, you know, here you'll pick out uh, maybe your sales rep, maybe your customers, uh, products that you want to budget to. Uh, the point is, this is just an operational template. Uh, you have the customers within those. Uh, you have the, the specific products that belong to that customer. Uh, you have the sales, cost of goods sold. And the purpose of this is to go in and by month budget quantity right, um, and model the gross margin. So when I change this, click Enter, the sales are naturally going to change. Uh, and if I want my you know, gross margin to let's say increase to 56%, needless to say, uh, the cost of goods sold, you know, have to decrease, right? Uh, and that's January, you can do that for February, and so on, okay? And then you store that data back into the database. 
going back and saying, you know, what's one last template that you can show me? You know, I like it. Uh, and I'll open up the operational expenses. Okay. There's numbers in here, uh, but for you, most likely be blank, right? So you have your company, department, uh, you, know, you have your month here. Uh, maybe what I will do is I'll say, hey, I want to do budget version two instead, right? Click a button, and because I picked budget version two, okay, it now gave me new numbers, right? Uh, and it says budget version two. I'll go in and over on the right hand side, you know, for comparison, it gives you actual nine months of data, right? Because I picked up September and forecast. And guess where that forecast is coming from? It's coming from the very first template that I showed to you. So again, you're not using links in Excel, you're pulling from a database. And similar, you know, we didn't budget um, for budget version two for the full-time uh, employees for administration. But if we did, that would have a number right here. Okay? And the point of that is to store all of that down and have your uh, full expenses you know, that you budget, you look at it, uh, and compare them to expenses for last year. And over here, you know, yes, I got it. You know, I could type the data into every single cell. Uh, but what else can I do? So maybe for conference and seminars, what we want to do is say, you know, we want to add some line item details. Now I'll just get rid of these numbers. Uh, you know, for conference and seminars, I want my department heads to say, oh, which, which conferences did they actually go to? So what I can have them do is add line item details that roll into that account. Uh, so maybe in here, you want to go in and say, uh, focus solve our conference and say, right? Um, then you go and say, and that's going to happen in August, um, and we're going to spend, you know, $1,000 here uh, for registration. Uh, and then you go down, and you'll say, um, you know, we'll also go to Enverge for FMT, and that's going to happen uh, over here in May. Uh, and you can say, you know, we're going to spend, you know, $4,000 on that. Um, you, your users can also add comments here. And so they'll go and say, well, what do we spend the $1,000? And then maybe, you know, San Diego Hotel. Which, by the way, we are going to have a user conference uh, in San Diego uh, during August uh, 21st to uh, August 24th. So we'd love to see you guys there, right? Your users can input that. Uh, click OK, and then store that data back. The point is, after they store it back, and you can set it up, by the way, uh, with conditional formatting, so anything with line item details, you know, changes color. In our examples, we just have borders around it. Um, but now your users can go in and drill down and see that information. Um, also, you know, maybe for consulting, you're saying, yeah, I actually really don't want line item details. But I also don't want to have to go to every single cell and input. Uh, perhaps what you can do is go in and say, well, I want to you know, query the history of that account, click this button, and now it automatically goes in um, and spreads the history across the months. And there's many spreading you can do. Uh, you, know, you can maybe take uh, last year uh, and have it spread for seasonality. You can do a quarterly spread whatever you prefer. This is just one method. And the point is, yep, counts for seasonality, but maybe your business is growing, so you know your consulting is also going to grow by 8%. Well, here I click 8%, apply, click OK, and now that breaks out every single month increased by 8% uh, without, I'm sorry, right here, without you manually having to go in and do that. Okay. So time saved with uh, automating a lot of the calculations you might otherwise do. Uh, then go ahead and you know, save that data back into the database. And by the way, a button that actually is grayed out um, is this you know, Save Data button. What that does is enables workflow. Um, and if I open up just a quick example, this is probably you know, something just the administrators will see. Here we have all the templates. We have the users. And you can set start end dates, so you know certain date, certain users will not see or be able to even open a template after a certain date. 
you know, if we analyze this a bit, you can see that demo user two, uh, they're not you know, going to see assumptions or personnel. Those are hidden. Um, and then the revenue and cost of sales, the details, that's up for approval. Uh, because demo user two here, they already clicked this check mark, right? Um, then you go in as an administrator, approve, and it closes out the template. Um, you can see demo user four here, you know, maybe they save the data like I've been doing, but they never actually uh, submitted their template. When it submits them, it locks it out and you have to go and approve. That's the purpose is to manage who's inputting data, when it's input, and have some controls over that. Okay. Uh, you know, here, that's the budgeting component. Uh, but like I said, you know, I don't want to spend time in reporting. But it is interesting because what you do is, yeah, you budget your forecast, but ultimately, why do you do that? You do that to compare how you're doing, right? How's your business doing? Or you know, if you're not for profit, give it to your directors, whatever the case is. Um, and you know, within the same platform, what you can do is, um, and it's a little choppy here today, and what you can do is go back in, um, and now, you know, great, you're done with your budget. You want to go in and you actually want to see, you know, your actual maybe compared to forecast, compared to budget. Uh, you choose your parameters. You expand out and you see the actual year to date, you know, the forecast um, and the budget, right? Uh, and the point is you can drill down into any of this, uh, view the data, uh, and you can say, hey, I want to see actual budget version two instead. So you go and say, great, you know, I want to see action budget version two. So very flexible. Um, and this is now just a report. But again, it's reporting on what you budgeted. So you know, right underneath here, I stored all my personnel. Great. Uh, but now I want to see a roll-up. You know, so I pick my company, pick my department, pick uh, which budget or forecast version. Uh, and now I see just a roll-up of every in, in, uh, department here, all the employees. Here's our total salary, um, you know, which I can always go in and see uh, more, more granularly and drill into the data. Okay. Uh, what I want to do now is this is really a, a great platform if you have a lot of different departments. Um, you know, perhaps you have different locations. You don't want to be in Excel. You just go in here and you do all of your reporting and budgeting directly from this portal. Um, what I want to do is switch gears a bit, and maybe for some of the organizations are saying, actually, we just have centrally the Office of Finance budgeting, and we don't want to go through the web. We just want to stay all in Excel. And next, I'll illustrate where these templates were created. One, because whether you're deploying it on the web or Excel, they're created in Excel. And then two, to show you how you could potentially just deploy it in Excel uh, and not go through the portal. And to do that, um, you know, what I'll do here is I'll open up uh, Excel, and you might notice that all Excel formulas and formatting you can use, this is truly Excel, uh, except we have two tabs here, the Add 360 reporting for creating your reports and planning to add some functionality directly on top of that. Um, these are assignments, that's our library where all the templates um, reside. And these are all uh, predefined CAN templates. You know, I, I definitely don't want to oversell them. Yeah, you can use these, and we have, like I said, hundreds for various verticals. Uh, but there is going to be some modification, right? So these are really good starting points. Uh, and if we look just to compare complete apples to apples, uh, you know, we did kind of the expenses with line item detail. This is now exact same interface. It was built in Excel, um, and you can deploy it in Excel. If I go in and, and, you know, same thing here, you have your various parameters, uh, you'll select them and run this template. And notice, by the way, nothing is hard-coded, right? So this template, when you add a new account, this is now I'm looking at it from power user perspective, the person building it. You know, when you add a new expense account, it will automatically give you that expense account without you manually having to go in and add anything. Your user goes in, you know, 
takes this, runs it for company, department, same exact same we, we saw on the web, uh, clicks this button, right? Uh, and then they get, I close out of this, you know, they get next year uh, for you would be blank. And then over on the right hand side, uh, you had nine months of the actual and three months of forecast. Uh, continue scrolling down here, you know, accounts are a budget on other forms along with the variance. Uh, and same thing here, you know, if we want to add line item detail, um, we go in, click this enter data button, um, and what that will enable us to do is both do that spreading and add line item detail. Okay? So same thing we should, what I showed you on the web, except now uh, we're with our you know, Excel-based tool. And here you, know, you can add line item detail, and right underneath you, know, you can put um, supplies for finance, uh, add the, the um, amount, add a comment here in you know, January um, was the sale. Uh, and, and so on. Okay. Also, I'll just take this out for a second, spreading same way. You know, maybe here we have uh, nine months of actual, three months of forecast for current year. Uh, for next year, we want to you know, copy that history. Uh, so great, spreads it evenly. Uh, and we want to increase it by 3%. So it goes in and increases each month here by 3%. Uh, you, know, you update it, and then your users just go in. Uh, Close out and save that back into the database. Okay. Let's switch gear a bit, and what I'll show you is uh, a template that's you know a little bit more sophisticated. Uh, everything I've been showing you so far, just simple budgeting, uh, but you can absolutely you know uh, handle uh, sophisticated modeling. And to illustrate, I'll go in. Uh, maybe open up uh, modeling, go to MO4. Uh, the purpose of this you know, is to model your total desired net income okay? and then adjust it by various uh, methods. So nothing's hard coded. You go in, uh, you pick your company, you pick your forecast version, uh, pick the month here. I'll just you know, stay with September. Click a button. And then based on this, data is going to generate here. And if I look at this, what it's doing, it's giving you, you know, annual uh, year to date, so as of September. Then it's saying, hey, what would the year look like if seasonality continued? And what this is actually doing, it's pulling data from last year uh, and saying, hey, last year you had about 30% of the revenues that came in the remainder of the year. So it's taking that and saying, well, if trends continue, um, you know, then your annualized actual to, by the end of the year uh, will be at, scroll down, you know, 515000 You're looking at that and you're saying, yeah, but we're maybe going to acquire another company or we're going to, um, you know, procure a major contract. And the point of this template is to say, I want to see how every account adjusts if I want a, a desired net income of 500000 instead. Click this button, um, and now every single month adjusted accordingly uh, in order to keep that you know five hundred thousand in place. And when I scroll down, it's now five hundred thousand. And you can see, I mean, I'm not cheating. This is just an Excel formula. Okay. Uh, how does it do that? By the way, these are all just formulas. So the point is, you create them once, and then you're able to reuse them. Uh, and before I illustrate that, you know, let's go in and say, all right, well, that's helpful, but I want to see what it's going to look like if my revenue grows by 10%. I scroll up and I see, okay, my revenue is going to be at 20 million. This is where you're going to start doing your what-if analysis, which means, great, what if though, you know, really, I, I know my business and the, the revenue is going to grow more to, um, you know, 18%. Let's look at it. Well, changes to 21 mil instead. Uh, and as that revenue changes, the cost of goods sold and expense also have to adjust, right? In order to keep that, when I scroll down, um, 500,000 in place. Okay? Useful template. Um, what I've seen users do, you know, these are just categories we create like OpEx, operational. For you, uh, these are going to be your own drivers. Uh, 
but what I think is really useful is you go in and you pick out your percentages. Um, then you can also model it by your departments. So maybe specifically, the reason my um, you know, uh, expenses are going to grow is because we're going to hire a ton of sales and marketing folks. So that's going to grow by 7%. So when I scroll down here, right, you see um, these got adjusted by 6%, but right, every uh, other operational expense got adjusted by 6%, but specifically for sales and marketing, that got adjusted by 134 Right, because it goes in and multiplies this. Okay. Uh, great, you store that data back into the database, and then you can push it out to your users, and then a sales and marketing executive might go in here and say, yeah, there's no way um, you know, a certain expense is going to grow that much, decrease, it decreases the amount, um, and when I scroll down, it keeps that 500,000 still. Uh, so very useful modeling templates. Okay. And you know, while yeah, you're saying these are form, these are all formulas. You know, if I look at it, these are Excel formulas. The point is, yeah, they're complex formulas to do your calculations. Of course, it's taking a lot of different variables, right? If I look at these, these are actually extremely complex. Pulling data from below, um, you know, it's using a bunch of if statements. But the benefit is, you have these templates, and after you modify them a bit once you're able to reuse it over and over. So next month, you don't have to recreate any of these formulas. You go in, you pick a new month, click this button, um, and now it will automatically give you October actual data, um, and you can do the same thing and you know, reforecast the rest of the year. That's really the point of this. Uh, and again, uh, you know, I'll go back and forth for just one second. Uh, the point of this is you go in, right, and now you store, you push that uh, back up into the portal. Um, so you go in, right? You say upload data to the portal, right here, and then your your user consumes this on the web. Okay. Uh, let's go and say, great. You know, what else can you do? Uh, this is another template that I found really useful. A lot of people say, hey, well, you know, I just want to take current budget version. I have multiple, and uh, you know, I want to adjust a few things to see how my budget, budget version 2 would look like. Uh, again, a modeling template. This one, more simple, though. Uh, it's really just to change one version, one budget version to another. You run it. Um, you pick out, and by the way, it's very easy to create budget versions here. So you'll take this budget version, Budget version two, um, click a button, uh, and then based on this, right, gives you your current budget. And you, what you can do for budget version two is say, well, I'm looking at this, you know, I have account, that's great. Uh, you know, I'm going to be at a net income of three mil, uh, but in my you know, budget version two, I want to see how every account adjusts if I want to reach four million instead. Click this button, you know, and everything, all of the um, accounts adjust. And then I can even go in and say, well, specifically for administration, um, you know, I want to see what happens if I cut my salary down by 8%. This changes, uh, and all of the data changes as well. Okay. A useful modeling example. A uh, few more templates here. You know, what if I want to um, go back in and do some allocations? Uh, allocations are often done in Excel for companies. Uh, and because you have the simple ability just to store data um, and you know, create things once and then reuse them, this becomes extremely useful. Uh, where you can go in, and I'll just show you something very simple. Here, you're going to allocate employees by projects. Um, but for you, you know, this could be anything. Uh, maybe this could be departmental uh, allocations, divisions. You pick your parameters here. You click a button. Um, it gives you the employee, right? It's going to pull from your ADP system or your pay other payroll. Uh, it gives you the department code, the projects, and then you can allocate the percentages. Uh, so perhaps you go in here and you say, you know, project three, um, you know, here's the, it's 10% of Tracy's time. Uh, then go back in here and say project three. It's um, you know, another 80% of, of uh, Ted's time. 
then you can go and say project one, 20%, and so on, right? And after you do that, it spreads out the salary here by month, okay? And right below, it summarizes it, right? So it goes in here, project three, you know, summarizes and can store that back into the general ledger. Um, so anything manual you do in terms of allocations can be done using this template. And I'll go back in. And another thing, you know, having kind of been a consultant and seen this, I don't think enough companies uh, project their cash flow. And I think it's actually quite important. Um, you know, same concept is you've created this in Excel. You pick your parameters. Um, you know, and now you can go in, budget your you know, overall change by month, um, scroll down here, you can add your you know, various proceeds from loans, and then as you, you know, put both the cash inflows and outflows, um, everything else gets calculated on your behalf to actually show you, hey, how much cash are you going to have for the rest of the year, right? Um, and these can clearly be modeled based on your own business. Um, now, once you're, you know, kind of finished with all of these, you can also have a tool, and it's called the Report Publisher in our suite, that automatically sends these out to end users. Okay. Uh, let me see what else is, is kind of interesting here. Uh, for those of you guys, you know, do travel expenses uh, for TNE, also something you can automate here. Uh, and this, again, just shows you kind of the the variety of templates. Um, you have your parameters, you run it, uh, and then you have the employees, the departments they belong, the reason for travel, um, and in this example we've done you know, air, rent, miles, and so on. So you go and say, well, this employee, um, it automatically fills in with their department, right? That's how we built these templates, to be smart. BJ here, this is his department. Um, and then you can go in and say, you know, what's the reason for travel? Sales, uh, training, okay. number of trips, uh, number of days they've done the trip, and then you can say, you know, whether they've done air travel, and so on. As you do this, the system automatically goes in and spreads out, you know, the airfare here that you input, um, the hotel, um, the rental, and so on. Okay. So useful. Um, formula here. And because you know you have all of this, um, the budgeting and the reporting in one place, if you now put yourself in the position you're a senior executive and you want to see how your actual you know, business is doing compared to the budget version you just put, maybe you have this board package. Uh, and what this board package does, this is now just a report and you know all this is hard coded, not hard coded, it's all dynamic. So, you know, payments doesn't say anything here. Um, and that's because when I scroll down, you know, all of these are going to roll into a news tab. Okay. So descriptions, these modern improvement, period, end. Uh, all of these are going to fill up with words based on how you're doing actual to budget, with you, which you just input in the system. Right. So now you say, hey, I want to see corporate U.S. Um, I want to see actual compared to budget as opposed to budget version 2 or 3 or anything else, um, click this button, and then based on these parameters, uh, the system will automatically tell you how you're doing uh, with your actual to budget, right? Um, and it actually goes in, says corporate US, right? Sees great improvement in the month of September, um, tells you how profitable you were, uh, tells you your revenue here, uh, tells you your customers, your products, and who owes us money, and who we owe money to, right? Uh, where does it pull its information? From these other tabs. So I have, you know, a dashboard. Uh, these are just regular, just quick charts in Excel, but again, right, it automatically adjusts for you. Uh, trend, 12 months. P&L here, as of September, you know, here you have your actual, and your budget, right, that you input in the system. You can see all the months. Uh, cash flow statement, balance sheet, uh, and again, right, everything else, maybe your sales, actual to budget, you can click and see the date, the quantity, 
um, that they sold, the unit price. This is actual, but over here maybe you can have something for budget, do a variance, um, your vendor payments, and so on. So very nice having both reporting and budgeting in the same place. What I showed you is deploying this in Excel, which is one option. Um, the second option is going in here um, and deploying on the web. There you go. And you click this Upload Report button. Um, and then your user, instead of opening Excel, it goes in here, um, kind of like I showed you, logs into you know, a website and, and goes in and views the templates kind of look at maybe at something exactly like we did here for forecasting, right? Uh, remember, we up pushed that um, template back onto the portal. Well, here it is now, right? Uh, where you can see, same thing. You have the desired net income that you model out, um, and then based on this, it you know, changes your what if, changes your forecast, and same thing, we just saw it um, you know, in Excel. Now we see it on the portal. And I'm going to address this question immediately because it always is asked, is, hey, while we're on the portal, well, can we push this back into Excel, right? Let's say we want that, but for certain users, you know, for the really complex templates, we want to push down into Excel. Um, the answer is, yeah, we have this button, right, this QR reader, because we have apps both in Google Play and the Apple Store for this. Um, and what you can actually do is go in and say, you know, this is my um, modeling Excel click a button, and you can see that the download was completed. Um, and that's really advantageous um, because, you know, what you can do is now open this back up, um, and now you get everything in Excel, okay, with all the formulas that you use. Okay, so all the formulas still in place. That's our, um, you know, portal and our uh, budgeting uh, system. Uh, what I want to do now, just show this to you, and then we'll um, address any questions. And what we looked at today is, again, everything's captured inside of the data warehouse. Um, and then you, know, you've, you can input data on the portal um, as long as view reports and, and dashboards. Uh, and you can also do everything in Excel if you prefer that. Uh, so that said, I want to read off um, a few questions here. Um, and let me go back here for just a second, uh, read off a few questions, and leave our contact information. Um, so the first question that I see coming in, uh, which is actually very important, uh, is can we, do, can we use both Excel and Web? Um, yeah, absolutely. You know, the question is really from a process perspective. Uh, is it necessary to use both? Uh, I've definitely seen where you know, maybe the more uh, Office of Finance, sophisticated users that have very complex templates, want to keep everything in Excel, great, you know, they keep those in Excel. And then the easier, like the, just the operational expenses, CapEx, those they keep on the web. Um, so the answer is yes, you can use both. Uh, you just have to think from a deployment perspective what makes more sense with, uh, with the company. Um, and I know we're kind of running short on time, um, so you know we have our contact information here. And uh, any other questions, uh, please feel free to uh, email us, and we'll make sure and get those addressed. Um, I want to thank you, everyone, for joining. Very much appreciated. Um, and Lucas, is there anything else before we uh, wrap up? No, Alex, I'd like to just thank you for the terrific webinar and to remind everybody about Enverge 2017 coming up on May 25th at the Marriott in Del Mar. It's going to be a great time, a great excuse to come down to San Diego and enjoy this sunny weather. And with that, thank you for joining us today. If you have any other questions, we will be following up with all the attendees, so feel free to ask at that time. We truly appreciate you taking the time out of your day to join us, and we hope to see you at our future events. Have a great day.